All right. Welcome on in to Falls Count Anywhere. Charlie Turner, Chris DiCarlo, and John Restino all here with you as usual here on Facebook Live. Here on Memorial Day weekend, guys, of uh, May the 25th of 2024, we are at episode 124. And uh, guys, quick shout out again. This is Memorial Day weekend, so we want to show our love to those uh, brave troops that uh, paid the ultimate sacrifice for this country as we uh, as we celebrate their lives uh, over the weekend and the sacrifices they've made for us to live the way we do. So uh, a salute on this Memorial Day weekend to all of those uh, that unfortunately have perished um you know prior to today and, and have served this country and we are all proud of you so um just wanted to throw that out there and guys we got a we got a great uh show lined up for today we're gonna smell what the rick is cooking and i don't want to give too much away of course we have been throwing out some information on our website nice usa flag there in the back john nice touch uh but go ahead chris and uh introduce our our guests for today and let's get it rolling and a shout out to my wife, Tina, out there. Happy 50th birthday tomorrow already. Oh, happy Ooh. birthday. Ooh. Oh, yeah, the big 5-0, right? That's me next year. Anyway, <laughs> okay, so here we go. A uh, special show with our friend, a special co-host joining <laughs> us today, wrestling historian of not just Canada, but all the territories, our friend from Manitoba, Mr. West Maiden. Hey, good morning, guys. Thank you very much for uh, having me on today. It's going to be a great show. We're going to have lots of fun. It's going to be great to talk with our guests. And happy birthday to Tina, uh, Charlie, and John. Uh, happy Memorial Day to you guys down south, where uh, we celebrated our long weekend last weekend. And uh, so it's nice to have a long weekend. It certainly is. Um, enjoy, yep. your week, enjoy your weekend. Don't drink too much beer and uh, stay safe. <laughs> John, look at I see you. Look at it. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Well, Welcome our, back, our uh, special main event guest joining us today, also from Canada, uh, a former professional wrestler himself, member of a famous wrestling family, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ricky Johnson. Uh, hello, guys. Hello, everyone. Uh, Wes, it's really nice to meet you, uh, finally. Uh, the other three gentlemen I'm just meeting, but uh, it's terrific. Chris, uh, happy birthday to your wife tomorrow. Thank and you. uh, and to all my family and uh, friends in the United States. And uh, to reiterate what Charlie said, uh, happy Memorial Day. Without you guys, we wouldn't be here. Unfortunately, and, and, and women, I should. It's, it's I, true, Ricky. It's true. Without America's help over the years, although we did burn your warehouse or your uh, White House down in uh, seventeen something, yeah. But if we ever go to war, we at least got two helicopters. Yeah, we, you know, one of them's in the shop. <laughs> yeah, one's in the shop. Yeah. With, um, with that said, Wes, I'm pulling for the Panthers or the Rangers going forward, okay? <laughs> or the Stars. No, I'm kidding. Of course. Although, I'll, I'll, I'll throw this out there, Wes. I'm, I'm kidding on that. I wouldn't mind seeing uh, a Canadian team win the uh, Stanley Cup again. It's been a while. It's been, what, 30 years uh, since yeah. Montreal won it? Yeah. And we, we try our hardest, but uh, we're, we're too freaking polite. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you say that i just saw a video online the other day where uh oilers fans and um gosh who were they just playing oh vancouver fans were all together in one room and the series had just ended but they were watching the series together and they got up and they did a handshake uh handshake line in the living room that they uh that they put on social media that, that was cool yeah love, love canada so welcome you guys and, and thanks so much uh for joining us we're going to talk some classic wrestling today i know chris has got some uh classic clips lined up that we love to uh, show up uh, on our show here and and discuss as well so go ahead chris yes uh if if we will um gentlemen uh john if we can roll our first two our two clips we only have two clips of mr johnson's career here and then we'll get into questions and comments yeah, but but please just to reiterate please call me ricky not mr johnson there you ricky. go okay ricky I only make my wife call me Mister. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Clip here we go. One. Yeah. In there. Here he is against the sensational destroyer, local hero, Mister Dick Meyer. Johnson, 
I don't know why they said Daddy was never from Houston, Texas. It was always Seattle, Washington, right? Huh, yeah. I hit that two before. The hammer. <laughs> From Canada to Hawaii. Big hog coming in at six foot four, about three hundred and forty pounds. The Johnson brothers are gonna have their hands full with these. And uh if we show our second one, please. We're going in front of I want to cut you off. I want to say this. Do you know how important these titles are to us? It represents a million and a half people, but it represents our people. Just take a look, take a look behind you, this ocean. Take a look around at all this Hawaii, brother. This is our place. This is our country. This is our people that are right here. And we here. This is for the tag team belts. The Polynesian tag team belts between Rocky and Ricky Johnson, the current champions, and the number one contenders, the Dirty White Boys. And needless to say, there is no <laughs> love lost between these two teams. The Dirty White Boys? He's <laughs> such a hurt. Yeah, what a name. <laughs> They were famous in the Memphis territory. But here we got a couple uh anything go battle royals from Hawaii. Oh. <laughs> Here we hear on the uh, commentary the High Chief Peter Maivia during this battle royal. I think you see uh, is that Andre working around there in the ring. Yep, Andre the Giant Baba. Several masked wrestlers here. Yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, gotta love old school. Wow, that was impressive. <laughs> It's different. <laughs> a long time ago, that's for sure. Bring back some memories, Ricky. Yeah, you know, you, you with, took the uh, words out of my mouth. Yeah, lots of memories. <laughs> some classic footage there of uh, Ricky's career between Canada and Hawaii for us to enjoy here. Yeah, so well, Ricky, Ricky, I, I was, I was, I just wanted to start off today with a give. We'll give the uh, Falls Count Anywhere um, fans a little bit of brief history on uh, on, on yourself. Uh, you were born out in Nova Scotia. Down in Nova Scotia. Oh, right. sorry. Down in Nova Scotia. <laughs> yeah. Scotia. That's right. Um, from Manitoba, it's out. From Ontario, it's down. Yeah. Um, so a, a quick question, I, and I, I I don't know this answer, Ricky. It's, um, when did you move to Toronto? Uh, when I was four years old. My, oh, dad, so my dad passed in, uh, when I was four years old, and um, my mother moved us up to Toronto from Nova Scotia. So Toronto's actually, I know Toronto is my home. So yeah. even though I travel around the world, but um, with uh, with my dad's passing, uh, my mom thought it'd be better for us five boys. Uh, I'm the last one living by the way. And uh, she thought it'd be better for us to be raised in a big city where we would have more opportunities to do things and stuff. So. Mm -hmm. And you know she never remarried. I'm very proud of that. <laughs> okay. I'm sure she's not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, um, but you know she worked. She struggled to take care of us. So um, you know, I appreciate that. 
I appreciate the love that she showed us and gave us. So. It's, it's anyway, nice. let's move on. So. It's nice that um, you guys, you guys were able to move from. Um, not that it was bad in Nova Scotia, probably not, but you probably had more chance. Your brothers probably had more chance also in moving to. Yeah, Nova you know, Wes, uh, that's exactly right because uh, the opportunities. You know, we're in a now we're in a city of almost five million people. So that's right. I can yeah. I, I moved from a town of nine thousand people. So, yeah. Wow. You know, so. wow. Ricky, let me ask you this: Are they living in Toronto? They they've had a couple uh, WrestleManias out that way. The one yeah. being, of course, with The Rock and Hogan being one yeah. of the most uh, yeah, electrifying a, matches. Did you attend any of those? Oh well, yeah, that was a great night. Uh, you know, when Hulk uh, and Dewey came back uh, after their match, and uh, I think Razor Ramon and somebody else was uh, Kevin Nash or somebody, but. Uh, everybody was crying, including Vince <laughs> and Linda. So, wow. Yeah. Wow. And, uh, it was just a, a phenomenal night. And, uh, you know, the, the guys, they worked hard. There was a lot of people. The, the thing I remember most about that night is Hulk forgot his gear in Tampa. He lived in Tampa, Florida. And he had to, they, he had to fly back in the afternoon. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. Well, I didn't know that. Wow. And, yeah. And then he, had, he, he got there about maybe an hour before the show started, he got back in Toronto. Okay. Wow. He, he flew home to Tampa, which is, I think, a three-hour flight. Or, no, yeah. yeah, maybe a three-hour flight. And uh, he picked his gear up, flew back to Toronto, and wow. got dressed. And, uh, and, he, wow, and, he had yeah. broken, and he had broken ribs that night, legitimately broken ribs. Oh, didn't know that. Wow, yeah, yeah didn't know that. Well, and that, you know, that actually, that match, of course, stole the show. That should have been the main event, not the Triple H title match. Of course, everybody oh, says that yeah. now. Yeah. But whatever, you know, it's, it's wrestling. <laughs> it's wrestling. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a tough act to follow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, well, any, anything that the Hulk's involved in is going to be a tough act to follow if he can remember the names of the arenas. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Right. Super Dome, Super Dome, Dome, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and speaking of which, we uh, we were just uh, you know you, you we couldn't do this over WrestleMania weekend. We know you were busy this past WrestleMania as well. Yes. Yeah. Um, but you know it's a pleasure to be here now and to meet all you guys. Uh, you sound like terrific guys and and uh, Wild Man West is the coolest. I've only talked to him on Facebook a few times, but uh, never. Again, I'm going to use the term face to face, but it's really as if not. But right. the closest I'm going to get for that. We have we have <laughs> met Ricky um, a number of times. You wouldn't remember. That's fine. Doesn't bother me a bit. Um, usually, it was associated with Terry Dart. So, um, oh, okay. I don't. I knew Terry very well. Yeah. So he was a I, great I was, photographer and um, wrestling uh, aficionado, and yeah. he was a great guy. We uh, we were best friends for like 35 years. So uh, oh, I you, remember meeting you now. If you, if you met Terry, that. I was probably standing behind Terry. But yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> um, so Ricky, I was going to ask you, and another thing I don't know about you specifically is um, how and where and when did you get trained? I got trained in Tampa, Florida uh, with my brother and Pat Patterson. And uh, Pat also trained my nephew, Dwayne. Okay. Him. And uh, we just started working out at the Sportatorium down there, and oh, yeah. showed yeah. me, yeah, showed me a few moves and stuff. I said, "Well, okay, let me try this." And uh, back when I was young, I was extremely good looking. So, <laughs> my, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the people liked me, so it was cool. So you know, mm -hmm. and I got you down like as for like. 19 you started in when, when 1978 78 okay march march 17th 1978 nice yeah and and you, i worked with uh chris tolis the golden okay. Greek, my f very first match and i was really really nervous and uh, he got at me through the whole thing we went 15 minutes to a draw so and that was and in I, I was, gardens no oh. we did a, it was a tv taping in hamilton ontario Okay. Yeah. Oh, for Maple Leaf. But you did work Maple Leaf Gardens. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love the gardens. I loved uh, Frank Tutty. Yeah. Yep. Norm Kimber. I love Norm Kimber. 
Yeah. Don't mention, don't mention Jack Tunney, though, because. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, that's another story. <laughs> we we um we 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 have to distinguish between the relationship, especially in Maple Leaf Wrestling, and maybe you guys from Falls Counts um, wouldn't understand, but it's okay that there's a huge difference between Frank and the wrestling promotion and Jack and the wrestling promotion. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, and yeah, to say Frank, the least, Frank was, <laughs> Frank was basically an all around good guy. Everyone loved Frank, and and he probably had dislikes but on the same note he was had been around for so long and he made so many friends and he was welcome to help out new guys especially a, people who he was a fair man yeah and then jack was jack was just more of a businessman that's all nothing against the guy but he was he was a businessman and i get it no no he's, he was he's a liar <laughs> you you're trying to be nice, Wes. <laughs> well, I'm, 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 I'm fine. So, well, kind of, kind of the stories we hear from you know, like guys like uh, we've had uh, you know, Mr. Pat, uh, Mr. Pat, uh, you got me, Pat Patterson on my mind, uh, Ricky. Uh, yeah, yeah. Ken Patera, where you know, Mr. McMahon was like Mr. Tunney, and Jack was like Vince, Vince Jr. Right? Like junior, yeah. 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 Uh, that's a good analogy, actually. So, you know, you know, and I always thought Jack Tunney was just a uh, just a uh, character on WWF wrestling. They just threw him in like the president's chair and say, "Okay, you're going to be yeah. the president on TV." I didn't yeah. realize he had like a prominent role. Well, you know what, Charlie? You, the right word you used. He was a character, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> and I'll leave it at that because he's he's uh, he's not here to defend himself. So. Fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> right now, Ricky, um, I'll jump in. You know, I, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, John is a little older than me, but I started watching <laughs> five years old, um, 1980. I was five years old here at, of course, Niagara Falls, New York. Like Charlie said, right across the, right five minutes from uh, Niagara Falls, Canada. Here, I love, um, I love Niagara Falls. Me, me, and my wife go there a lot. Actually, <laughs> we got you guys get the better view uh, of the falls over there. Yeah, we got a. Yeah. Uh, we had WWF, of course, at midnight. We had NWA Mid Atlantic at three. We had Maple Leaf, of course, on CHCH Channel Eleven. Yeah. I yeah, mean, there's so- a lot of good wrestling or wrestling mm-hmm. uh, events or, or time and time slots around that area. So. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, so old school classic wrestling is what I'm all about. And um, yeah. but I wanted to ask you, Ricky, um, do you think maybe the WWE? always will be WWF to me, but the WWE might be in a better direction now with Triple H. Do I think so? Yes. 100%. Yes. Yeah. 100% because uh, uh, I, I don't want to call him Vince Trump, but uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, the other guy was a dictator. Yeah. 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 So, and, uh, did you say dick? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same thing. <laughs> but uh, with, with I know where Paul, you're going with that. And I'm yeah, with you. Right no, with Paul though. <laughs> Paul is uh, Paul's got vision. Uh, yeah, you know, he's he, had respect. Great, he had a great career, and his career is um, winding down. And he's transcended uh, into the business, end, and he's doing a hell of a job, in my opinion. But what? Well, um, only my opinion. So. Right. And Ricky, what did you think of? of the rocks return and then the run he had up in, and then to WrestleMania. I mean, I thought you I, know, he I loved brought it. a lot of fans back that maybe you might've left. Yeah. I loved it because, and especially the sole purpose was to get Cody over. So, yeah. And, and he uh, was, he, he kicked the crap out of him with that belt, uh, yeah, with he was yeah. whipping him with the belt. Yeah. And the, the beautiful thing about that, I love how they implemented uh, social media into that because they showed like a, follow-up video where the director saying okay cut show's over and the rock's like no it ain't over yet and he still kept you, beating you, you know for me though guys the the, the thing was uh because i remember cody's dad when we lived in tampa and stuff uh, dusty yeah. and he'd come over to the house and he, and dewey was like a little boy four or five years old and he'd pick him up and stuff and you know we have barbecues and things like that and and now to see it come full circle for mm. uh Dwayne to, to do that for Cody, uh, to me it was amazing, and That's it was great. very you know gave me goosebumps watching it because Cody, uh, I know Cody personally, obviously, and you know my family doesn't my wife, but uh, just to see him 
finally get treated with respect um, because of uh, Paul Levesque, by the way. My cat's up on the chair. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> yeah, he's a ham like me. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> anyway, just to see Cody get that respect was phenomenal because uh, right. he's a, a really, really nice young kid. And it's yeah. easy for me to say that because I know him, but yeah, I guess that's why it's easy for me to say it. Well, it seems that way, though. It seems that way from our point of view. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, Ricky, I got to say and for everybody, you know, I've, and I've admitted on this show, like my, my wrestling fandom came from like the WWF days. That's what pulled yep. me in. Yep. And so my my experience with Dusty Rhodes at that time was like the polka dots and everything. They but as we've done this show, yeah. yeah, I know. Right. But as we've done this show, we've seen classic footage. Of course, you can go back online and watch, you know, yeah. a whole bunch of matches. I have certainly learned to appreciate Dusty Rhodes, man. And, and 100%. I look back and think, man, he might be what, the greatest of all time as far as talking, the moves in the ring. What, well, nobody, 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 nobody could talk like, like that. Yeah. I'm nobody sorry. Go could, ahead, Rick. Nobody could talk like Dusty. That yeah. For sure. You know, and uh, in the business, we call, he had little subtle moves that he would do, just like with the thing and then with the, the elbow and the biotic, you know. And he I, I think Dusty drove by a gym maybe four or five times and he never went in. <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't need to. <laughs> he was over already, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. and, and in the South, uh, Dusty is um, he was gold. Like yeah. he couldn't, you know, so. Yeah. yeah, one of the great things about Dusty is I mentioned the, well, as I should, maybe shouldn't have mentioned the polka dots, but he made it work. You know, I mean, it's like give him a, a pile of whatever, and, and he'll make it work. You know, you, and, mean, and, you mean like a pile of shit? A pile, a big old pile of polka dot <laughs> shit with that. <laughs> that <gimmick. Yeah. laughs> you know, uh, Dusty, uh, Dusty said, "Are you paying me?" And uh, <laughs> Mac said, "Yeah." So he said, "No, we polka dots." <laughs> Done deal, right? Yeah, yeah. pay me. <laughs> Ricky, I was going to ask you about one of the people who um, old school fans really, really love, and that is your time wrestling against the original Sheik. Yeah, I love the Sheik. Um, he was, uh, he's probably the guy that treated me the best. I, I, I worked for, me and him worked for the Canadian Wildland, the Bear Man, for a long time. And uh, I wasn't happy with my money. Uh, I was, I think I was making a thousand bucks a week back then. It was 30 years ago, 35 years ago, whatever it was. And I went, anyway, I was going to quit. And the sheik told me, he said, uh, come up to my room after the matches and tell me what's wrong. So I, I went upstairs and we we're staying at a holiday in, I think in Ottawa, Canada or somewhere. And, uh, I told him, I'm going home, man. I said, I'm only making a thousand dollars a week. You're the sheik. I expect you to make a lot of money because uh, you're the sheik. You, you draw a lot of money. And uh, anyway, make a long story short, uh, he went and talked to the, the wild man, Dave McKegney, who was a, probably the fairest man I've ever, ever worked for in my life. And I've been around the world. Uh, anyway, he went and talked to Dave and he said, Ricky's going to go home. And I was working with the sheik every night, so he didn't want me to go home because we had great matches. And because uh, uh, I think he fell down once, but he must have tripped. <laughs> 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 but anyway, uh, I got more money, so I was happy. I, you know, I went from a thousand bucks a week to three thousand bucks a week. So I said, That's okay, right. I'll, I'll stay now then. <laughs> and as a quick plug here, Wes, for your new podcast, go ahead. Yeah, so I've got a new podcast which basically centers around the Canadian Wild Man or the Bear Man. It's called Adventures in Bearland, and uh, I'm really excited about it. We're going to be talking about everything to do with uh, Dave from the 50s right up until the faithful, unfortunate uh, accident in July of 88. July 4th. And Ricky, Ricky and I have talked about that in the past on, on texting, and, and Ricky's been really gracious with his time with me, helping me w out with both my Facebook page and the podcast. So I'm really looking forward to speaking with Ricky down the road. But yeah, it's uh, nice to be able to center yourself on something that you really, really love. And 
Uh, th thank you very much for uh, letting me talk about that, Chris. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah well, all you gotta, guys are going to help and promote everybody, right? Yeah, yeah we, we, um, we, and Wes, sorry, I'm, I'm looking very forward to being on your show. Oh, good. Thank you, Ricky. It's, we're going to have a nice in depth, in depth talk about everything. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, I, I was just going to ask you, Ricky, you had a promotion for a while in Ontario. I did. Yes. And tell us about that. Not the, not the, it wasn't very successful. <laughs> well, I lost a lot Mars. of money. <laughs> yeah. um, but I gave it a shot, you know, and um, it wasn't a big promotion. It was a small promotion. And uh, we lost money and stuff. So one thing you'll find out about me is that I'm very honest. So, and, uh, <laughs> we didn't do well. And uh, we shut her down. So that's the deal. So. Yeah. And was that like for a season or two seasons or no, about three years? Yeah. Three years. Yeah. yeah. And you had a lot of the regular wild man guys on your shows and uh, on uh, your some guys. of them. Yes. Yeah, some of them and Angelo Mosca and the son and uh, Dewey Robertson and missing link and stuff. So, okay, good. And, uh, and Ricky, do you have any, uh, do you have any contact at all with, uh, with Jacques Rougeau who runs that wrestling Academy there in Canada? No, uh, I know Jacques, but I, I don't, uh, He's on my Facebook, but we never talk or nothing like that. Oh, so, uh, got okay. He's running like a wrestling academy there. Yeah, doing I, I heard it's very good, actually. Yeah, yeah, he, he's doing a great job with that. Yeah, and uh, uh, prayer for his, his wife, or his girlfriend, I apologize, but I don't know their exact relationship. But I, know I she's don't going either. Battle. Yeah, so prayers for her it's as pretty, well. pretty, though. <laughs> yes, yeah. And then another, I'll tell you what, another guy that should be in the uh, WWE Hall of Fame, we've talked about the WWE Hall of Fame and how kind of messed up it's been. Over the years, a lot of people that are missing. Rick Martel, we've mentioned on this show, and, and so many more. Demolition, uh, you know, Bill Eady, and those well, guys. I'm, I mean, well, I'm going to go back even a little bit further than that because uh, one of my best friends, and he was my mentor, is Sweet Daddy Seeky. Mm -hmm. And why he's not in the hall, any Hall of Fame, whether it's the, uh, the one in Iowa or right. Vince's. Uh, St. Louis. See, yeah. Sweet Daddy Seeky was, uh, in my eyes, the superstar of superstars. Uh, way before, way like, ahead of his time. Way before his time. Uh, acrobatic, skilled wrestler, colorful, could play both sides of the of the ring, which was yeah. important back in the day. You know what, Wes? He told me how he made money. Mm -hmm. He said, "I back in those days, in the early 50s, mm -hmm. he said, I went into a drugstore. And I bought a bottle of blonde bleach. Mm -hmm. I dyed my hair blonde and I made a million bucks yeah. <laughs> for 50 cents. <laughs> right. Yeah. And he's still with us. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, he's alive. Must be one must be one of the oldest guys uh, still still kicking. Uh, uh, he'll, be, he'll be 91 in September. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good to hear that, you know, because wrestling, well, the wrestling that, but, but he has dementia yeah. and stuff, so. Oh, yeah. uh, dementia. Yeah. So, Ricky, tell us about any of your favorite opponents or your least favorite opponents. I mean, it's one of those questions that we like to ask. Okay. Uh, my favorite, I guess, uh, I had a bunch of favorites, but my least favorite, that's that's even a better question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, yeah, I, I don't I, because if I say least favorite, you're going to hurt somebody's feelings. I don't want to do that. So. Well, <laughs> but my favorites, I, I like working with Mark Lewin and uh, and uh, those guys in Hawaii. They were pretty cool and stuff in Australia and stuff. So, and the the Japanese guys were pretty stiff though. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, we've like, heard that to where like it, wrestling in Japan is well, you got to fight for your life. Yeah. yeah. You got to fight for your life in Japan. So. Oh. And, uh, oh, my favorite, Sabu, because he kicked my teeth out. So. Okay. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. Mm. Accidentally, not on purpose. But. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, Ricky, uh, if I could ask you, we always talk, right, uh, Charlie, West, John here, we and we miss uh, two legends, indeed. And it's talking of, if you got any stories of the Iron Sheik, Hussein the Great Arab. Yeah. Uh, do and I have stories? <laughs> and Andre the Giant, if you do. Uh, I have stories on both of them. Okay. Yes. And uh, 
I got to be careful here. <laughs> <laughs> nah, let it all hang out. Yeah. Ball count anywhere. It means no DQ, no rules. Yeah, no nobody's ball. watching this. Right? No one watching. <laughs> 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 no, nah, the Iron Sheik was, um, he was different. You know, he was very strong, naturally strong. He sure. carried those big uh, clubs and stuff. And I, I picked one up. With both hands, I could hardly lift it. He was swinging them over his head with yeah. one hand wow. each. So, so. Uh, who else did you ask me about? Andre. Andre. Nobody could drink like Andre. <laughs> 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 and uh, if Andre liked you, you were lucky. If he didn't like you, you were very unlucky. He was a big, <laughs> big guy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah we, we, we 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 did that better role you guys showed it at the beginning of the show. Uh, I was in that with Andre and, and Bad News Allen, Bad News Brown, mm -hmm. and I never knew Bad News at the time. And we were in the ring, and he said to me, he said, uh, "We got to do something together because we're working at the next show." And I said, "Okay, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> who are you?" <laughs> and that's how we met. Then we became really good friends. But getting back to Andre, Andre, uh, Andre was, uh, you know, the cliche, the gentle giant. He really was a gentle giant. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> right. He went in the snap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we heard stories, especially from uh, Johnny Rods, that he had to drive Andre around, and just the the drinking stories too, with from uh, Ken Patera uh, and Johnny. I think Andre holds the world record for drinking beer. I think he had 137 beers. Or, oh my God! At one, at one sitting. <laughs> at one sitting. <laughs> yeah, in one sitting, not in one week. <laughs> yeah, in one sitting. <laughs> well, you know what? what I've never, I've, I, I've, I've never seen that story, but I heard about it. Yeah, what you know, the thing I just saw, I just saw this the other day, and I, I had no idea. And it's kind of a, a side note because it has to do with baseball. But Wade Boggs. Uh, was on a podcast. I, I saw that online too. He drank, he drank like beer. almost a hundred beers from New York to LA on a flight. Like, oh my god, that's wow. like Andre the Giant level, man. That's no, way but if, I, if Andre <laughs> knew that, he would have drank three hundred. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. wow. They may be still playing him, uh, Wade Boggs in the meantime, right? <laughs> what about the stories, guys? We had when we had Mr. Ken Patera on. Ricky told us when they got to Vegas, they were doing a show in Vegas. Yeah. And they got to Vegas, and Andre said, come on, let's go to the hotel bar. They ended up drinking and eating with the Dick Murdoch, Ken Patera, Andre the Giant. And then they had to go in the ring and wrestle that same night, too. Yep. Oh, I, th those stories are true. And, Wes, getting back to you, you asked me a question. Uh, you just mentioned Dick Murdoch. And I love working with him and Adrian Adonis when we were in Hawaii <laughs> and stuff. And, uh, um and you know he was a certified member of the Ku Klux Klan. Oh wow! He, sh wow. he showed me he showed me his card in the Honolulu oh. Arena in the dressing room. But for some reason, he liked me. <laughs> How weird! Wow, never. That's, heard of that's that bizarre. Oh, that's it, the truth. In this yeah. day and age, like it's just. Did you know that, Wes? Uh, I've heard something like that yeah, many a, many years ago. But and Ricky, you know, no. No pulling punches. Guess what? There's still people that are like that, and and it's it's yeah, like course, yeah. I don't I don't like it. No yeah. one does, but so, unfortunately, yeah, there's still there's still you that know, shit that goes on. Uh, my my family is black and white, so I could care less. But yeah, uh, other people have issues. And that's their issue, not mine. That's right. That's right. Right. Now, Ricky, have you tried the uh, the new line of home products from The Rock, the Papa Tui uh, face cleanser and uh, and all that other shit he's selling right to these days? <laughs> if, it, if it's not booze, I haven't tried it. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've tried a couple of things. <laughs> Fair enough, yeah. <laughs> when, Ricky, when are you bringing out your line of clothing? Uh, yeah, my, when, after I'm going to go lay down, my wife will wake me up and they'll think of something. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky, I, I saw you a few times on some uh, independent shows in Ontario with, uh, I think they were Moose Scott shows. What? Uh, Moose Scott? Yeah. I remember him well, yeah. 
I think I think we um, I think we saw you quite a few times on his promotion around around the Toronto area. Like yeah, not in Toronto, I worked a lot around it. Yeah, but, uh, there were some there's some great um, a great young talent coming up with there, like Dan Marsh, who we know. Yeah, and, Dan's uh, a cool guy. Yeah. Uh, what was his name? Vince Vince Bright. Oh, Vince, a, a big black guy from Hamilton. Yeah. He worked yeah. as a uh, Zimba Khan. And uh, he was a great guy, and still a good friend of mine. He's a bit, little bit older than me now, but um, just just a little bit, eh? A little bit. <laughs> and um, um, I, I don't think I, I don't think I met you at Bernie's. Bernie used to have a uh, Bernie Livingston used to have a barbecue. I don't I don't know if you ever came. I was not. I was there about three years ago. Okay, maybe it, maybe we just never connected that day because I was there a couple times too. Yeah. There's a bunch of wrestlers there, Bobby Bass and some other yeah. guys. I forget their names, but um, well, we're to crash that party. When's the next one? <laughs> uh, Bernie died. So mm. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 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 Bernie Livingston was a was a local guy who owned a, a carpet store just outside of Toronto, and a, ma a major carpet. Store. Yeah, he he was a big deal in the carpet yeah. business, and and sometimes you drive by on the street where he was. It was on Dundas Street in Mississauga, and if you look the proper way through the front window, you can see the Wolf Road. Road set up in the back of the warehouse. Yeah, Wolf Wolfdale Road. Yeah, I'll never forget it. So um, it, was, it was pretty neat to see, um, and a lot of guys went through there. Lo local and, uh, guys, you know, the, some of the guys now when they come to Toronto with the WWE and AEW and uh, other promotions, they uh, the older guys ask about Bernie. Okay, they used, wow. to, they, they used to go work out there, right? Yeah. And they said, "Can we go work out at Bernie's?" I said, "You can, but you'll have to go to Evan." <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Ricky, if I could ask you, I mean, and, and John will uh, testify to this, but since we love uh, watching, grew up watching Maple Leaf Wrestling, right? You mentioned Bobby Bass. No. Um, what uh, did you know, or which we didn't even know, he was really silent, silent Brian McMeat wrestled on Maple Leaf Wrestling. Do I know him? Did you know him? 100%. I, <laughs> I just seen him, a uh, uh, big, big, there's a local wrestler called Big Mac. And uh, he passed away about a month ago, I think. Yeah, and, oh, we uh, heard that, right? Yeah, Silent uh, Brian was there, and huh. he wrote on a piece of paper. He wrote, "I this is it made me cry." He wrote, "Ricky, you're the nicest guy I ever met." Huh. That's wow. right. And I got goosebumps that one. I think. <laughs> yes, um, and, and, but and, Angelo Mosca made him talk. Okay, really? Was, yeah, because oh, wow. he hit him. He With hit the yeah, he hit him so hard one night he went. <laughs> Brian oh! said, "Oh, for fuck's sake!" <laughs> no, he went. He hit him and he hit him like as hard as he could, and, and Brian went. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> wow! Yeah, Angelo King Kong, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Mosca, me and Mosca had so much fun together. Oh, um, you know what? I'm gonna tell you guys one story because I can't. Absolutely. Stop. I have a wedding to go to this afternoon. So. Okay. But anyway. Uh, Mosca, me and Mosca were going to Hawaii, and he and, and O'Hara Airport. It's a long walk to get from uh, where we got off at to go over to him, uh, switch over to our connecting flight. So Mosca found a wheelchair, and he said, "I'm going to sit in the wheelchair. You push me, and they'll take us there faster." Right? So I pushed him <laughs> along in the wheelchair, and they said, uh, "What's wrong?" I said, "Well, my friend tore his knee up." We have to get, make our next flight, but I don't think we're going to make it. So they brought a cart over, a fast cart. Mm -hmm. They laid Mosca on the cart. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And we flew over to the next, because we didn't want to walk, because we were in the bar most of the morning. <laughs> <laughs> the, the well, that's Wes, I the gotta, I gotta, I'll save some of the stories for Wes, though. <laughs> the, life, yeah, right. the life of wrestlers on the road, unbelievable. I, I, and you can't I can't even imagine the 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 even the remotest <laughs> shit that goes on because yeah. we're we're all working nine to five. We're not finishing work at eleven o'clock. Yeah, but you know what? Going across the street to the bar and then going to the airport and God knows what else. Right. Well, you know, that's a good way to put it. God knows what else. <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, uh, 
I used to tell I tell my wife and my my kids and my grandkids and stuff. I I work ten minutes a day. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah, maybe fifteen. So right? no. I was pretty lucky. <laughs> You guys got to get up and go to nine to five or eight, eight to whatever time it is. Yes, sir. Yeah, the regular, the regular uh, everyday grind. But I didn't get rich, but I had fun. So. That's nice. yeah, I, would, I would have been uh, happy just to be a jobber, uh, you know, because we do a jobber of the week on our show here. I mean, yeah. if you wanted to sign me up is for that like, why you have me on? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. If we, <laughs> if, give me, uh, give me ten matches. I'll, I'll take it. You know, um, yeah, yeah. these guys had to. You know, I'll get my ass kicked for a few yeah. months. You know, give me you the page. What? <laughs> um, it, it was, especially back in the old days. It, it was a very um, easy life. It was just driving from town to town. Now people got to fly everywhere. It's major business now. So I yeah. Yeah, but, uh, well, you see, now they're doing international shows in Saudi Arabia and yeah. France and Peru, yeah. and they're all they were down under in Australia. Or yeah, we're going to a wedding uh, this afternoon, and my wife is a big wrestling fan, which I'm not, by the way. Hmm. And that she wants to know if they have a TV there so she can watch the King of the Ring. Okay. <laughs> That's right. That's at one o'clock today. That's correct. Yeah. King of the Ring, King of the Queen of the Ring. Yeah, she's the queen of the ring. <laughs> yeah. so she's she's like, a current wrestling fan, but you're not, Ricky. You don't, you don't really watch the current stuff. Not, not. Well, I watch some of it, if, but we have a bunch of TV, so and I watch. Oh, I some. Yeah, I watch some, but my wife, like, she knows everybody's name and mm. where they're from. Cool. <laughs> okay. Like, yeah, Bia, Bianca. What's that woman's name? Gina? Bianca Belair. Huh? Bianca, Bianca Belair. Belair. Yeah. yeah, like she, all she talks is, I love Bianca Belair. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> cool. But, That's but I never knew who she was until recently, and she looks pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, she's this, a great uh, woman yeah. The women uh, wrestling has come a long way over well, the years from you know, Fabulous Moolah uh, to today. I mean, by Chris, far. I'm, glad, I'm glad you brought that up because uh, the women are, are just as equal or more than equal than the men definitely because, uh, yeah i I've said that on this show there's been uh, a couple of the past royal rumble events not this yeah. past one necessarily but the year before i thought the yeah. women outperformed the men yeah, i thought yeah. they had a phenomenal yeah. royal rumble and the men was kind of yeah. flat so yeah there's yeah. they've come a long way a long way and they work very hard to to uh, make the industry better so yes it's, it's good if all I, the way around so if i could ask and, you know you, oh sorry go ahead if I could ask you quick, Ricky, um, other than probably Hawaii, what was one of your favorite promotions to work Japan. at? Like New Japan. Japan. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Noki and uh, I loved the Noki and stuff. So it was cool there. Nice. And uh, what's his name? Uh, I'm trying to think of his name. He worked for events for a long time. Brad Bradford or is Louis Spicoli. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, they wanted the bus to stop one day. Uh, we we're going to some town in Japan. And uh, Louis said, I got to pee. So we told the bus driver not to stop. <laughs> we, told <laughs> Louis, we told Louis to pee out the window. <laughs> so he's peeing out the window. We stopped the bus and said, there's some guy peeing out the window. Right? <laughs> The police came. They're going to arrest him for indecent exposure. <laughs> oh, again, again, road stories. Unbelievable. Yeah, just crazy. Well, that was Sabu's fault, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sabu did that. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that'll do it. Yeah. I couldn't imagine these days, guys. I mean, you know, they, you know, the wrestlers still travel, and but, but now they're they're connected to like their. Uh, their TikTok feed or their Twitch feed and all the social media. I couldn't imagine what it would have been like in the eighties. If that stuff was around, like some of the videos we might've saw from yeah, Andre on the road or dusty roads on the road or whatever you know the what? case, there had to be some legendary moments. We never knew about. You know what, Charlie? Um, now everybody has an agent and a lawyer. And, uh, we were just us. You know what I mean? That's my we just, we, we just did stupid stuff. <laughs> right. yeah. yeah. Thank God there's no cameras around, right? Yes. Well, yeah, there was no internet back then. So. Just uh, and, my, and I'm really happy that 
Dusty Dick Dick Murdoch with goats in the room. G oh. or, oh, or whatever yeah. it was. <laughs> Dogs, goats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's no internet back then. My wife listening to me now, so but I'm only <laughs> making jokes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, speaking of which, before we go, Ricky, Charlie, I believe we have a jobber of the week this week. Yes, sir. Like I said, we uh, we like to do our enhancement talent or jobber of the week here on Fallscon Anywhere. So uh, let's get into that right now real quick here. We have uh, Mr. Tony Burton. Uh, let me tell you something. I, I, I don't think I've repeated any jobbers on this show as of yet. We've done 124 episodes, and if we have, if anybody's keeping track, God bless you, because I'm really not. But uh, mm -hmm. Tony Burton, I believe, is one of our newest entrants here. But really tough to find a picture of him uh i found a match from wrestling challenge where he was uh, getting roughed up by roddy piper it was a little greeny so i didn't take too many uh screenshots there but tony burton had a career record of 0 and 21 wrestled from 1988 to 1991 and he hailed from nashville tennessee uh some of his notable losses uh and again what i give these guys credit is man they could say that they wrestled a couple of losses he had was against Dusty Rhodes, Jimmy Snuka. He did some tag uh, team wrestling, and he lost to uh, the Road Warriors, Demolition, just to name a few. Um, so, you know, shout out to Tony Burton. Again, only a three-year career, 21 matches that were televised and documented. Um, but, again, how many people could say that they stepped in the ring with some of those legends? Because it always takes two to tango in those matches. So right. shout out to Tony Burton, our uh, enhancement talent or jobber of the week. I love that. Uh as, as we talk about Ricky Johnson, let's delve in the jobber off the week. <laughs> no, no, no. Like I said at the top, you just know what the Rick is cooking. The whole yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, I never heard of uh, Tony Burton, but uh, he looks like he kicks an ass. Yeah. yeah he, a he real kind of fight. Like a, he's like an Aaron Rodgers look to him a little bit there. I, I thought I was watching Aaron Rodgers in the ring there for a minute. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. Actually, he does look like Aaron Rodgers, too. Right. Yeah. <laughs> It probably was knowing that jabroni. But anyway, we won't go there. Okay. Uh, Listen, I'm going to get out of here. Yeah. And I, w I want to thank you guys all so much. It's been a pleasure for me to do this. And um, you treated me nice, and I appreciate it. And Wes, I'll talk to you soon. Awesome. Pleasure to have you, Ricky. You can come back anytime. Thank wow. you so much. Thank you, sir. Yeah, wow, Wes, we're you. looking forward to that when you're doing that uh, interview with Ricky. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like a spinoff, if you will, and a follow-up and a more in-depth uh, interview. Looking forward to that. We, um, we, it is, it's just really exciting to be able to delve into what you really, really love, what like really makes you happy. And I, I'm nothing wrong with anybody else or anything I've done in the past. I, I, I love it, I, but I just love wrestling history. And, and I really appreciate you guys having me on today and being able to speak with Ricky is very nice. Um, I know Chris, you set this all up. That's awesome. Uh, I'm happy and thankful and very grateful for you guys very much. Thank you. Appreciate you, Wes. Always Thank appreciate you, Wes. your uh, contributions to our show, sir. Thank you very much. Take care, Wes. Yes. Yeah, thank you, Wes. Um, yeah, those guys, the, mm -hmm. you know, himself and George Shire and the others that join us on a regular basis, we appreciate uh, their, their contributions to this show to make it run better, you know, because we don't uh, claim to know everything about wrestling. I certainly the hell don't. Um, so I've learned a lot doing this show and, and from and from talking to those guys and a lot of these classic clips. Like I said, man, I, I've had a, a greater appreciation. I, of course, I knew who Dusty Rhodes was before he got to the WWF, but I never really watched his matches until he got to like the gimmicky WWF stuff. But going back and, and I, I just single him out for whatever reason. Recently, I've just been watching some Dusty Rhodes stuff. And it's like, man, he was just amazing. Yeah. Yeah, especially in, uh, you know, from, say, 80 to uh, 87. I mean, just a lot of great footage there, for sure. But, yes, uh, guys, before we go on this long weekend, John, if we can, let's thank our viewers. I know we've been uh, having some busy shows lately. We haven't been able to do that, but we appreciate our viewers across all our platforms. Of course, we are live right now on Facebook as our home. Our YouTube channel there is Friends with a Z media network put that in all together under the search on youtube and you can see not only this show falls count anywhere but john's football and sports and everything else that goes along with our uh network here if you will uh we're also on twitter x at count anywhere i talk to people each and every day and thank them also we are still on spotify threads and uh instagram 
under Falls Count Anywhere podcast. So we thank and appreciate everyone. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. John, anything uh, we want to give out to the uh, public? We'd love to give some helpful information. It is mental wellness, uh, mental wellness month here, and uh, mental wellness. Jesus, <laughs> I'm all over the place. Uh, but yeah, anyway, we have a different topic, which is just as uh, uh, as important. There, John, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I think it's raining. By the way, remember you asked if it was going to rain. It just started. Oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, anyways, domestic violence. It's it's mental health, obviously too, because it can be uh, it can be meant it can be verbal abuse type stuff, you know, or yeah. all the one eight hundred seven nine nine seven two three three. People are there twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. If you're somebody who man or woman who is being uh, abused, and like I said, it can be physical, mental, all kinds of things. Uh, they're there. They're um, standing by waiting for you to help you get out of the situation you're in, just talk to you, make make plans to do what you got to do, help you with the police, things like that. So that's domestic violence, 1-800-799-7233. Also, if you know somebody who's being abused like that and you know they're going to be afraid to make a call, you can call them and they'll help you help your friend or relative. Yes, sir. Very important stuff there, John. Thank you for that. And again, guys, as we wrap up here, I just want to, uh, you know, uh, just to send the love out to the uh, the troops and men and women of this country that have uh, that have paid the ultimate sacrifice and, and giving their lives to this country. Uh, we appreciate each and every one of them as, uh, you know, it's a three-day weekend, but we just got to keep in mind why it, it is a three-day weekend. We get to go outside and grill and have the freedoms that we have is for those men and women that have sacrificed. So keep that in mind on this Memorial Day weekend, guys, and we'll uh, reconvene here, of course, and uh, get some uh, future guests lined up as we uh, roll along into the month of June, as we are halfway through the year of 2024, guys, and rolling into the summer. Uh, wow. So we are looking forward to that. And uh, hey, guys, have a great weekend. Yes, you too.